Well, hello, boys and girls. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. And today, we are going to be giving the giving percentages for each team to make the playoffs this year. This is we did this on our live stream that we do uh, five days a week from. 1.30 to, or 1 till 3 Mountain Time, or 3 to 5 Eastern. Uh, all, all Everybody gets together. We all we all have a big frolic session. And uh, I, I, I tell people a team, and then they put their percentage down, and we discuss it. And, oh, my gosh, we do a little perlo dancing. We do a lot of perlo dancing, actually. And uh, we come up with some percentage. It's fun. You want to be part of it? Just hit the subscribe. You can be part of it. You can come tell us what you think. We do all kinds of stuff. If you look at the, my previous videos, by the way, thank you very much. A thousand, over a thousand views on my last video. We just hit 800 followers. 200 more is a goal. Come on, join us. 200 more people. We can get to a thousand. Yeah, that'll be fun. Okay, as you can see here, I have the division realignment. And uh, this is this was a pretty interesting one. I think I like it. It's all part of the, oh, by the way, the show, the NHL Pearl of Wisdom show. That's what it's called. You can search it if you, but I will send you out a notification every morning. So I remind you that you can be all ready, crowding around that. Just like, how about now? How about now? It's going to start right away. Love to have you. Steel Flyers All Sports Network also. If you like the four major sports and teams on those four major sports, you'll like the Steel Flyers All Sports Network because it takes care of all of that. We just got some more creators, but we're looking for more. Feel free to comment in the comment section and we'll see if we can uh, get a hold of you, uh, see your work, and possibly... You can be making a little scratch, doing what you love. That's a fun thing, isn't it? I think so. Okay, let's look at our first team right there. Anaheim Ducks. Okay. Well, we had uh, pretty low scores for the Anaheim Ducks, I have to say. I was one of the higher ones, and I'll tell you here in a second. Um, there was some 5%. This is the percentages from 1% to 100%. Uh, 5%, um, 10%. I had 15%, and uh, people thought I was a little crazy. But honestly, as much as I still think Anaheim should have went through a rebuild here, there is some elements of possibility here that Anaheim could make the playoffs. Isaac Lundstrom had a fantastic year last year. I know he didn't get many points, but for a 21-year-old, I want to say something here too. Players like what just happened with Kokaniemi in Montreal. He's a 21 year old kid. Isaac Lundstrom has been brought up appropriately by the Anaheim Ducks. Their player development system is very good there. And I know Anaheim fans, you might think otherwise because, you know, you'll say that Sam Steele or Max Jones has not progressed the way you wanted. But they've actually progressed very well considering when they were drafted. To get a third pairing, a third line center, or a third line left winger at, tw at the 24th pick and the 30th pick is not too shabby. And they still got upside. So, which goes back to my point here um, Max Jones and Sam Steele still have upside. Uh, Max Jones is a big boy. I think the they could make a big jump here. Usually around 24 is the age where things start coming together for players. Alexander Volkov was a nice pickup from Tampa Bay. Um, and I, I'm interested to see what he'll do in a full season with Anaheim. He was putting up some decent points. Most of these 13 points that he got came on like the fourth line in Tampa Bay. He's got some skill. Um, Troy Terry, another guy that is just a hard worker, grinding and out, getting the most out of his body and skills kind of guy. 
is only 23. This is going to be a breakout type year for him, possibly. Trevor Zegris, we know, amazing. Uh, he's still only 20 years old yet, but he could have a huge year. Maxime Comtois, all of these guys could have big years this year, really surprised. That's why I had him at 15%. The community had Anaheim at 10%. And I do think it's, it's you know, a lot of things have to happen for this to happen. There's a lot of ifs here. Gibson's got to have a crushing year. Hasn't He's looked frustrated the last two years. Anthony Stolarz has got to show that he can be in the league. And I think he can. I think he's uh, 27 years old. He's going to work himself into his backup role here and it's uh, and, and do okay. And there's a lot of Lindholm, Shattenkirk, Fowler, Manson with Drysdale possibly crushing it and Jacob Larson now hitting 25, getting towards his prime. It's not a bad defense. So tell me what you think, Anaheim fans. What do you give yourselves to make the playoffs? We had 10%. Arizona, 1%. Like, there's no chance. Like, virtually no chance. So we didn't even get into it too much. Now we'll move on to the Boston Bruins. Oh, I, I wanted to do one more thing here as well. I'm sorry. Um, I'm just learning this. As you can see, uh, that's the other thing with Anaheim is they're in the Pacific Division, which is uh, one of the weaker divisions. LA didn't make the playoffs last year. San Jose, Vancouver had a poor year last year. Can they rebound? You know, if, if it was any other division, I probably wouldn't give them as high as I did, even at 15%. But because it's that division, I'm giving them a little bit more of a buffer. Talking about more difficult divisions, though, we've got the Boston Bruins now. And um, a lot of high scores here, of course. Um, but there are some things that I'm a little concerned about with the Boston Bruins. Uh, of course, the second line center position, this is well known. However, it's something that can be filled through the year. I don't like Charlie Coyle there, though. There has to be a better way. I've heard people say Eric Halla. Okay, I don't, I don't really like him at the center position too much. I don't know if you guys do, but um, he did have one good, decent year in Vegas, but Vegas didn't keep him, did they? Um, I would rather probably put Nick Foligno in the middle with Hall rather than Charlie Coyle. I understand why they're giving them one more shot, though. This is probably like the last shot he'll ever get to be an offensive player on the Boston Bruins or any other, well, maybe not any other team but um it just has not worked for him 16 points in 51 games he hasn't panned out the way they wanted when they gave him the five million dollars a year uh on defense there's not much not to like at least for making the playoffs they're still fairly young to where their big players like McAvoy Carlo Clifton are fairly young and their support players are on the, a little bit on the are a little bit on the older side I do like the defense a little better than last year where you had guys like Zaboro playing in there. But, um, and goaltending to me is fantastic. Uh, I, I've i heard pe people say, well, they don't like Linus Allmark. Why? He put up a 9.17 last year on a brutal team. He looked great in Buffalo. If When he was playing for in Buffalo, they had a chance. And that simple as that. Um, Jeremy Swayman, I think he's going to be okay. He's 22 years old. That's young for a goaltender, but he's special. They've been talking about this guy for a really long time. Uh, the community gave Boston to make the playoffs 82%. And we got to remember how difficult this is a, a little more difficult than the Pacific, the Atlantic Division. Um, you're fighting with Florida, Tampa Bay, Montreal, Toronto. A um, little more difficult division. But I still went with 85%. I, I just can't see them missing. 
and the overall for the community, which you can be part of if you subscribe, of course, uh, who made, we, they, we all get together and do lives, do a live stream and uh, you can be part of it. Hit the subscribe button, they'll send you a notification when it happens. Gave 82%, which I think is fair. There was a high, we went as high as 90 and there was somebody who had a uh, 60%. I don't know where that came from. Try to get an answer from them. Probably just not a Boston fan. I would have to think. Uh, I can't see how you only get 60% there. Next, we go with uh, the Buffalo Sabres. And um, yes, of course, the Buffalo Sabres did get a low score here. Um, that's uh, the whole Eichel situation hanging over their heads. Um, they did look better in the second half last year, though. Um, and, and they kept Granado because of it, and so should they have, because Granado is um, a fantastic coach from what I've seen, at least for, you know, small, uh, you know, it's a small sample size, but the team responded well to him. And that could keep on going here. So there's no reason there. Uh, the, it was 11% community that Buffalo makes the playoffs. Um, I actually put 5% and I, it's more to do with the fact that they're in with the division that they're in than, uh, than the competitiveness of what this team will be. I, I think there's possibilities here that um, Buffalo could surprise. However, you got to do something about this Craig Anderson, Aaron Dell goal. And that's the reason why I put a 5% to tell you the honest truth. Um, of course, Jack Eichel is in here, but he won't be in there. But Casey Middlestat is prime for a breakout type year. Tage Thompson looked really, really good in the second half last uh, last year. And uh, Dylan Cousins is 20. He's really looked good on the ice since he's come in. He hasn't looked out of place. Anders Bjork had a new fire when he came over from, from Boston there, having the opportunity where he didn't in Boston, he was kind of buried there. Um, so there's some good things in Buffalo and a great system with Granado and a great motivator in Granado. There could be a surprise, but a lot of difficulties in the roster as far as depth is concerned. Will Butcher and Mark Pishik as your five, six, just ain't going to cut it. Um, however, there is some decent defensemen coming up. Matthias Samuelson played and looked good last year. Uh, so he could definitely take one of those spots. Um, as far as prospects, I mean, Owen Power is going back. But Ryan Johnson um, could get a really good look. It's possible. There are things that are possible here. But there's going to be new need to be new goaltending. Anyways, there was one individual that gave a 20% rating. And uh, that's pretty high. I don't know if that was a Buffalo fan or not, but the overall was 11% for Buffalo. Next, the Calgary Flames. And uh, kind of all over the place with the Calgary Flames. Again, they're in the uh, Pacific Division, which makes it a little easier. Um, there are teams that, you know, Vancouver struggled. Of course, we just talked about Anaheim. Um, there are teams that they can beat here. Edmonton could have poor goaltending. Um, there's a chance as long as you're in that division. And the people that were in the stream, live stream, that gave their input on the percentages of chances that Goudreau, that Calgary makes it, gave them a 38% chance. Um, I personally gave them a 40% chance. So, and it, it was tough for me with this roster. But I do think that being in the Pacific where you have Anaheim, Los Angeles, I think Los Angeles is going to have a very good year here, but you got to see it first. San Jose. Seattle, of course. I don't think Seattle is going to be that great of a team. Vancouver, can they rebound after a poor season? I think they probably can, but 
there's a lot of opportunity for Calgary to come out crushing it and possibly make the playoffs here. Actually getting a 38% chance is probably not too good considering that division. But we need to see big things from Johnny Goudreau. Matthew Kachuk has been great, but I think there's more offense that in, in them than that. Johnny Goudreau should be a 100-point guy. Um, picking up Jake Coleman, giving him a, rock, a, a, a whack load of money uh, for his production level, but um, I see what they're doing. I think it's taking the edge off of Kachuk to have to be the guy for everything, and he can focus on his offense. Um, and that may work. But the big question marks really is Sean Monahan. Is he uh, able to to rebound off of what appears to what apparently is some injury filled seasons in the last little while, and uh, become the twenty five thirty goal scorer they need to be? Dylan Dubé step up here here right for Calgary. Uh, he's got to be more than a twenty two point player. Now we all like his speed. We all like Dubé's heart. But in order to be in this top six, he's got to be more than a 22-point player for them to make the playoffs. And then you got the wonderful Andrew Mangiopani, um, which has me wondering what's going to happen there. Do you really want Andrew and Mangiopani playing on your third? Um, maybe move him over to the right if Dubé's not working out. Um, tell me, Calgary fans, I, never, I, I really haven't seen him play uh, both sides very well. Is he equally as good on the right side? Let me know. Because I think that would be the best place for them to do. Problem here is I'm not a big fan of the fourth line in Calgary. Uh, it's pretty... Brett Ritchie just hasn't been able to produce in the NHL very well. Fourth line is probably where it needs to be, but I may change my mind when I see it. And defense, um, I know... The stats guy say Zadarov's defense uh, is quote quote elite, but I really think that has a lot to do with who he was playing with more than him. When I see him, he do he he doesn't move the puck out well. He really doesn't move the puck out well. So big question marks. Noah Hannafin, Hannafin, how does he come back from his injury? Is Rasmus Anderson, who had a down year, going to kind of kind of crush it? I think he will. I think he's going to be fine. And Yusuf Valamaki too. A lot of question marks. And if there's a lot of question marks on a team, you can't really give them the highest score in the world. So we gave them 38%. Next, Carolina Hurricanes. And a uh, pretty popular team after a pretty fantastic year last year. However, we know they've lost uh, Dougie Hamilton um, and really kind of replaced him with Anthony D'Angelo. I think that was the biggest piece. Then, of course, the goaltending situation uh, where they lost, they, they let Morazic go, brought in Frederick Anderson, had a chance to sign Bernier, but didn't. I think that's going to bite him, man. Unless Antti Ranta cannot be injured. If Antti Ranta cannot be injured, forget about Frederick Anderson, to tell you the honest truth. Anti, anti Ranta can, if he can stay healthy, which he hasn't been able to do really for quite a while, he's probably going to take the number one spot. He's fantastic. He's really awesome. They're taking a gamble here that he's going to be healthy. But man, if it pays off, Carolina is certainly, certainly going to make the playoffs. Now, the community gave it 84% chance in what is going to be a very difficult division. Uh, to make the playoffs. There was 195%. I was actually the lowest here. I gave them a 70% chance. And I, I like Carolina. I'm not, I'm definitely, I'm not anti any team, but I'm certainly not anti Carolina. It's my second favorite team in the East. Um, but you're talking about a, a much better New Jersey team, a better Islanders team, I think, although they need help on defense. A better Rangers team, probably a better Philadelphia Flyers team. This is going to be a really tough division. And if that goaltending uh, doesn't pan out, if Ranta's injured and Anderson also struggled with injuries, things could go south. They could. Um, 
I, I believe. So I'm not as confident as I would have been have they stuck with Bernier, that's for sure. Yes, I really like Bernier. Next. Chicago Blackhawks. And uh, we were all over the board. This is actually, let's, might as well go right back and look at the, this division right now. This is the toughest division uh, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, Chicago, for, oh, Arizona, might as well not even be there. <laughs> gets, Arizona gets moved over at the right time for a rebuilding team because they are going to get absolutely trounced by just about every team here. Chicago. Colorado, Dallas, Minnesota, Nashville, who played with a lot of heart last year, St. Louis and Winnipeg. That is one. That's got to be the toughest division, right? I would say. Tell me what you think there in the comment section. Um, so not a lot of high scores for any of the teams in this division, really. Um, but for me, it's Marc-Andre Fleury, right? Marc-Andre Fleury can get an average team into the playoffs a lot. In fact, they can get a just above average. He can get a just above average team into the Stanley Cup Finals. So could he do it in Chicago? Absolutely he could do it in Chicago. And Kevin Lankinen played extremely well until he started to wear down later on in the season. So goaltending isn't a problem in Chicago, that's for sure. Um Calvin DeHaan, Jones brought in, McCabe brought in. Love McCabe as long as he can stay healthy. That's the thing about McCabe. If he can stay healthy, this is a really good, pretty, really good defense. I think Jones is going to bounce back after struggling in Columbus. Um, so, and then Riley Stillman and Ian Mitchell, it's good enough for a 5-6. A little worried about their depth, possibly. Although Wyatt Kalniak, Nicholas Bowden, no, there's not much to worry about. Even with depth, it's going to take a lot of injuries for this team to really struggle. So um, I love the Tyler Johnson move, bringing him in with all the cups he has. He was buried in Tampa Bay. So I would kind of throw the point production out the window right now until we can see what he can do in a top four role again. Or sorry, top six, two top six roll. Sweet passer, great for a guy like Dominic Kovalik. Works out well. Kirby Doc's going to be back. Beast, oh my god, guy's an incredible beast. Love him. Uh, so those that top six to me is great. Problem we have with Chicago is the uh, not really a third line. It's more of another second line. Uh, there, this team's going to have probably end up having to score a lot because I think they, even though they have Marc Andre Fleury, the defense and uh, especially coming from the forwards could cause a problem. Patrick Kane, I love him, but can't play defense worth a darn. Anyways, we gave Chicago a fifty-six percent chance to make the playoffs. Uh, mostly because of the tough division that they're in. Um, we did have one 100%, and it wasn't a Chicago fan. I asked them. 100% sure that Chicago is going to make the playoffs. That's pretty ballsy. Um, I, had, I had 57%, and I really like Chicago, but I said that division is pretty difficult. Uh Columbus Blue Jackets, and I just noticed that, okay, after this I'm going to have to pull up Colorado because it looks like it's not there. Um, Columbus Blue Jackets. And this was a fairly, I mean, I think Columbus would have a better chance if they were on a different, on uh, a diff, in a different uh, division. But as it is in the division that they're in, it's going to be pretty tough. On paper, it looks not too great. Um, line is going to have to come up huge for them to make the playoffs for sure. Jack Rozovich is going to have to take the next the next step 
in his development. Oliver Bjorkstrand, like every player, Gustav Nyquist is healthy, apparently very, very healthy, uh, but he hasn't played in a year. Um, I think Jacob Borchik's going to play up here with Patrick Lyonet. There is some possibilities here with the right system that this team could do some damage. Also, you have a very driven Elvis Merzlikens. I don't know if you've heard, and Columbus fans, I'm sure you have. He is playing for his friend who passed away, and I'm not even going to attempt to say his name because I always forget it. Kevartan, Kevartan, you know who I'm talking about. Great goaltender um, that was moving up in the organization. Terrible um, firecracker or fireworks incident, unfortunately. But he is pumped. He's saying that I am going to win for my buddy. He's going to win the Vesna this year is what he says. Well, if that's the case, they certainly got a darn good chance if he plays that well. Um, in fact, I've never known a goaltender to win the Vesna that didn't make the playoffs. So that would mean that they made the playoffs. They made some good moves bringing in Jake Bean. This is a team that is definitely looking to rework this uh, rework this organization with younger players. I love the Adam Boquist return for Jones. You guys watch. You're going to love this guy. I think he could end up being better than Jones, to tell you the honest truth. I don't think they're ready yet, and uh, neither did the community. Ended up being 11%. Somebody had him at 0%. Come on now. Columbus, this this is a team, and, and you have Larson, who's a good coach. You never know with these new young coaches. They're great motivators usually, and they can, uh, you know, this team could just be motivated and outwork the opposition and make it. Um, I, I actually gave 11% as well for them to make it. Uh, again, this it's just a tough division more than anything. Um, I'm going to move over to Colorado here because I see that we kind of missed it, but I do have it down in my books, but I don't have it on here. Colorado Avalanche. Um, of course, they got high marks. Uh, even in the tough division that they are in, uh, with Chicago and Minnesota and all of those guys, uh, they're still just way, way, way too strong. Um, I gave them a 95% chance to make it. I, I, there was those, there was a couple, what was the lowest one? 80%. And the 80%, um, pick from, again, these are people from the live stream that I'm part of. You guys can go check it out at any time. You can become part of it by subscribing. Um, it was, they was like if, uh, Kemper gets injured and he has a tendency to do so, but Francis is apparently very healthy. If they lose both. Even then, I just think this team is too strong. Even with some of the players that they they did have to lose because of, uh, uh, like with Gra uh, Graves being traded, um, because they're trying not to lose anybody for free, Don Skoy to Seattle. Um, I thought they did a really good job. They got Mikhail Maltza back. Watch out for that guy. He's a good fourth line, could be even a third liner, and they did need some size. Uh, but the top two lines are still beastly. Berkoff, Berkowski, Kadri, Comfers, great. Landis, God, McKinnon, Ranton, maybe the best line in the league. And their defense is exquisite. Exquisite. Getting Ryan Murray to fill in that 5-6 uh, spot on the right side was nice. But... That lot, Taze, McCarr, Gerard, Johnson, and Bowen Byram. Like, what? That, that alone, I got to give it to them for sure. So we gave them 92%. Detroit Red Wings, or sorry, Dallas Stars. Dallas Stars. Um, this was tough for me because this group is so old. And they're in a very, very difficult division. Um, again, you guys can, anybody can uh, be part of this process of giving percentages. Uh, but they, we, they actually only got 60%. And let's go back to the divisions again and just take a look at what we're talking about here. Um, 
Dallas is with Chicago, Colorado, Minnesota. All of those teams could easily make the playoffs. St. Louis, Winnipeg. Winnipeg just improved their defense, and we'll get into that when we get into Winnipeg. This is going to be a really tough division to make the playoffs on. And, and uh, Dallas happens to be there, and my issues with Dallas is their age and the injuries from last year. Radulov is 35 and starting to get injured. Is that a trend? Is he going to be able, be able to be healthy all of a year? All of a sudden, all year, you know, it's possible for sure. But I mean, it's all. It's also there's there's also a big question mark of whether he's going to be able to do that. Tyler Sagan had a terrible injury, and he's coming back from that. Um, he's still fairly young at 29, but he's got to recoup from that. Joe Pavelski is he still going to be able to do it at 38 years old? Nothing to say about Ro- Robertson and Hins except for possibly. You know, the sophomore slump from Robertson, I don't see it. That lineup is great if they stay healthy, but if they don't, things get a little messy. Blake Como, Foxo has lost his uh, offense that it looked like he might have had in his career, but still a good third-line center, no doubt about that. Dennis Garyanov is just so inconsistent. If he could put his consistency, this team, I would put a lot higher percentage. It really comes down to guys like Gurianov here to produce in this lineup. Uh, Kiver, Kiveranta, it's time to step him to step up, maybe even pull out the top six. I think it's possible that, you know, I think it's pretty likely that they do make the playoffs. They have, you know, picking up Ryan Suter was fantastic. The top four is very, very good. Lindell, Klingberg, Sutter, Suter, Hiskinen, and Sekera and Hakampar are fine. Down there, and you still got Ty Delandria, uh, Rhett Gardner can fill in. Um, on defense, Andreas Borgman probably will get more of a chance this year. Um, and Thomas Harley might even be ready. The guy has been just eating it up in junior, so they have depth, it's not too bad. I gave them a 57% chance, same as Chicago, just because it's such a tough division overall, though. The community, which you can be part of by subscribing and and giving your two cents on all of this, gave Dallas a 60% rating. Oh, that's why. Sorry. Uh, Yes. Detroit Red Wings. Um, Surprisingly, some very high... Uh, percentages for the Detroit Red Wings. Well, one being 50%. And I can understand why. There's a lot of players on this roster that can knock it out of the park this year. Uh, Philippe uh, Zadina, Detroit Red Wings fans. I was say, I said Zadina because I heard him in the World Juniors like uh, announcers calling him Zadina. And then I looked it up and there was some lady that says Zadina. And some people, I, I know most of them were saying Sadina, but I like to try to get it, you know, close to what they would say at home. But apparently it's Sadina. So you got me, Zadina. Um, anyways, you could have a breakout year this year. Could crush it. And if they do, they have a much better chance of making the playoffs. Toronto can falter. Um, there's a lot of teams. Montreal, you know, they've had so much turnover there. Weber being injured and all of that. If this could be the year, possibly. Uh, Maurice Sider, the much anticipated uh, Maurice Sider, probably going to be in the lineup there, sure. This is going to be pretty exciting. Uh, Philip Ronick with his new contract. I just, this is where it really falls apart with me is the defense, though. Um, Troy Stetcher and Mark Stahl, to me, just isn't good enough to make the playoffs. Danny DeKaiser has never been able to come back from his injuries. I don't know if he's going to, Dow. Nick Letty, uh, great, good for an offensive player, and it will teach them some power play time. I think you traded at the deadline, to tell you the honest truth. Terrible defensively, though. I just think there's too many problems here on the defense. Uh, offensively, and also a third line of Nemeshnikov. Rasmussen, okay. You know, 22 years old, turning into a really good two-way player. Sam Gagne, though, no. 
No. And, uh, you know, just very green, very young team. A lot of things would have to go right for them to make it, I would say. And I, we'll see what Nedeljkovic can do. But honestly, I think Bernier was a better goaltender. And we're, we're going to see that. Uh, it's a, I know you're going to say, well, he put up good numbers. Look at the numbers he put up last year. It was behind a very good Carolina defense. And as the year went on, teams started to figure Nedeljkovic out. That's one of the reasons why they just didn't give him that much of a ask, offering for a raise. And he ended up going somewhere else. And Thomas Grice is good, but he can't, he, at his age, he can't be doing tons and tons of minutes. So, anyways, um, 29%, not bad. Probably one of the higher percentage we've given them for the last little while, for sure. Uh, the Edmonton Oilers. Again, in that poor division, with in the Pacific Division, it this should be knock, knock it out of the park, make it. The problems that I personally had, and uh, see, the highest was 80. There was a 65%. And most of the people, as we were talking in our live stream, that came up with these percentages are worried about the goaltending. If Mike Smith gets injured, Miko has shown that he can't, he isn't really great at being able to hold the fort. Um, also, Darnell Nurse, Barry, and Keith Duncan. None of them analytically were good at good defensively last year. Duncan Keith, every single player that played with Duncan Keith last year in Chicago did better without him. Not great. Uh, we'll see how it turns out. I think it's a very offensive team, and they probably will end up just outscoring the opposition enough to be able to make it into the playoffs in that very easy division. So we ended up giving them a 72%. But honestly, that is not much confidence for what should be a lot more talent with the talent that is supposed to be on this team. McDavid, Dreisaitl, Hopkins. Zach Hyman was a good move. I did like Zach Hyman. Um, expensive? Yeah. But I think he's going to fit well there. I hope I'm right because I'm an Edmonton Oilers fan. So 72%. Panthers, everybody's having a love affair with the Panthers. Uh, and uh, and for good reason. The pickup of Sam Reinhart for, what, what a first and a, pro, a goaltender prospect that they're already deep in goal with. Uh, yeah, fantastic. I think he's going to just beast it this year. That, t that line... Uh, I, I, I would prefer they play Reinhardt in the middle with Huberto, with his passing ability and his shot. The uh, shoot first centers are, 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 not, are hard to find, and they're very difficult to play against. And he's one. So I would rather him be there and then convince Sam Bennett to play the wing on that line. That would be fantastic. But overall, the depth on this team is second to maybe none as far as forward is concerned. Defense, it gets a little iffy. Uh, with uh, a good four, top four, Montour, I'm not a big New Tavara fan. And if they run into injuries, they got Matt Kirstad. He played really well. Lucas Carlson, no, it's okay. It's not too bad. I do like their forward depth, though. Um, it's probably a middle-of-the-pack defense. And then, of course, is this is where the issue, if there's any chance they miss, Bobrovsky doesn't come back and, you know, hasn't for two years. So there's a good chance that he doesn't. And uh, Spencer Knight is, uh, you know, too, is very young. He crushed it last year. Looks amazing. But we know how, how, how young goaltenders are. Uh, nobody saw that coming with Carter Hart. I think it's going to be fine, though. I gave them a 85%, and the overall community percentage was nine was 86%. If you want to be part of the community, again, all you got to do is subscribe, sign yourself up, sub yourself up, and you can come on my live stream and be part of all this fine frolic. Next, LA Kings. And we were all over the board here. Uh... I was, there was one 90% LA Kings fan. 
90%. Uh, being in the division that they're in, we'll look at that one more time for you, all you LA fans, as you already know, I'm sure. Being the division that they, they're they in, I think they have a really good opportunity here. Uh, Alec, we've talked about Edmonton could possibly falter. Calgary, are they going to be able to turn it around? San Jose, probably not. Seattle, I don't. I think that they have a better team than them. Vancouver has defense issues. Uh, and, you know, Vegas should make it for sure. And then you got Anaheim. So LA's got a really good chance of making the playoffs here, um, I think. Now, I gave them a 65. I gave them the highest. I gave them a 67% chance. I'm very, I'm really high on uh, LA this year. I love a lot. I love it when you see a, there's a lot of players here that can 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 take the next step. Gabriel Velarde, uh, I think, is a fantastic second, third line center. I would prefer they play him on the wing. They have played him on the wing before. He looks really good on the wing. And the picking up of Philip Dano, so he can take the tough minutes away from Anze Kopitar. I think you're going to see a, one of the, one, Anze Kopitar's maybe best year offensively. Um, there is some issues with Ayafalo and Brown, but they have so many great young players coming up. I think that's the reason why people are so excited about this team. They have taken their time with guys like Kupari and Arthur Kaliev, and they should be ready to jump in this year. And, and of course, Jer- Jared Dolan Anderson and then Quinton Byfield will probably get a good look. This team is super deep. And if if everything goes well with these young players, and I think they've brought them up well enough that they should, I think this team is likely going to make the playoffs. I honestly think my 67% is probably low. Uh, Defense, it's one of those defenses where the group is better than the sum of the parts, uh, but they all work well together, and they have a fantastic uh, leadership there with, why is his name escaping me? And it often does, to tell you the honest truth. Todd McClellan. Todd McClellan is a fantastic coach. I've been saying it over and over again, way back to when he was in his San Jose years. I think that I think LA is likely going to make the playoffs. The community gave him a sixty percent. We have one thirty percent. I think that's just somebody who doesn't realize the improvement that LA has been making every year. I can't see thirty percent, but sixty percent chance seems low to me. But that was a community. Uh, Minnesota Wild, and again, this is a super, super tough division. Uh, We've looked at it enough times in the video here. We know that um, every team, St. Louis, Winnipeg, Chicago, uh, this is going to be tight, darn tight. However, I love Dean Evason. Um, I just freaking love him. I think that it would be nice for them to get some center depth, and I know I talked to Minnesota fans all the time in the groups and stuff like that, and they're kind of disappointed they didn't fill that spot. Um, Rask really isn't a guy you want as your second-line center. But overall, this team has got so much going for it. Jordan Greenway, I think, is going to crush it this year. Eck showed showed that he can be a two-way, at least number two. He's going to work in the role of a number one, but he'll probably take another step up at 25 years old or 24 now. Um, that's 24 is the year that we, we see a lot of breakout seasons. So um, Marcus Felino is always fantastic. How do we not love Felino? They've got leadership. Now we know what happened with Suter and Susie, and that's going to be tough. But I thought that Garen did a really good job bringing in Goligoski, who's very underrated. Uh, Kulikov and Jordy Ben are serviceable in the in the five six spot. It's dicey to me, that Minnesota makes it um, on on the roster. But I give huge props for having one of the best coaches in the league in Dean Evason. And I gave a 70% myself, and the community gave a 72%, which I think in this division is fairly high. The low was 60, and the high was 89. Somebody had an 89. Finally, the Montreal Canadiens. And, um, wow, 
all of the movement and everything that's gone on in Montreal. No Weber. Weber's injured, of course. Uh, losing Perry, who was a big part of the heart of uh, the Montreal Canadiens. Um, Price, is he going to be okay in the regular season? He, apparently he's going to be okay going ready to go. Jake Allen is a nice buffer to have there. However, I think, and then of course we all know with the Kokiniemi situation where it was a tough spot they were put in. Apparently Kokiniemi was hearing that his name was, uh, there was talk about him going to Buffalo for Eichel. And that was where he just said, I've had enough. And he called his agent and said, call around and see if you can find somebody that'll help me out here. And they found Carolina, and Carolina did what they did. I think that it was a good move picking up Christian Dvorak. And I've heard, you know, he's been in Anaheim. He maybe has more offensive upside and all of those sort of things like that. I think he's probably in a really good team. He can play in the second spot, but often would play in the third line center spot. Um, he's a player that can play two ways. He doesn't replace Deno. Sorry, he's not that good defensively. Uh, maybe a little better offensively, but he's not that good def- as a he's not Selkie level. Um, so the lineup to me is thinner. I don't like Mike Hoffman. I love their top line. I don't like Jake Evans in the in the third line center spot, to tell you the honest truth. And um, I'm really hoping Droan steps up, but that's a big question mark. There is a lot of question marks on this team. David Savard won a cup last year, but didn't look good doing it, to tell you the honest truth. That's a lot of money. Uh, I mean, actually, two three point five isn't bad, but I'm not sure if he's a I'm not sure if he's a three three four anymore. He's got to step it up from last year. So there's a big question mark. A lot of question marks in Montreal. The uh, community, and of course, in a fairly difficult division there, the community gave him 39% to make the playoffs, uh, which is fairly low after making to the finals of the Stanley Cup playoffs a year before, but there's been so much going on. Um it's going to be it's going to be very interesting to see. I think Montreal is going to be the most interesting team to watch this year to see how they're able to rebound from all of this. Um, I personally don't think Josh Anderson. I, he had a high shooting percentage last year, and I don't. I don't know. I don't see what other people see in Josh Anderson. I think he can end up down here. So I gave a forty-two percent still. Because that division, you've got Toronto. There's a whole bunch of teams that can crap the bed in that division. Uh, there, It's a saving grace for that. It's it's a good division and not good. A lot of question marks on all the teams, on a lot of the teams. That's why I, Montreal can get over these question marks and they make it in. But 39% from the community uh, and the highest was... 50%. Lowest was 28%. You had a 28% around there. Well, boys and girls, that's my full 42. That's all I have to give. I hope you've enjoyed this fine programming and I'll be doing the rest. This is part one. I'll be doing part two later. Come join the frolic on Pearls of, on the NHL Pearls of Wisdom show and I'll pearl dance you out, my friends. Okay, bye.